Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're continuing here with section 3.2. We're asked to solve the equation 6x squared equals 30. Now, in the previous video, I reviewed for you how to solve a quadratic, a degree to a quadratic equation by factoring. Well, another property I'm going to review here hopefully when you look at this property or when you look at this equation there's a property called the square root property that's coming back to mind now here's what makes you think of using the square root property the only thing you see in this equation involving a variable is a squared term you see a perfect square you don't just see sort of a free-floating x term okay whenever you see something in that an equation in that form the square root property should come to mind. The first step in using the square root property is to get the squared term alone. So my first step here is to divide by 6. So I have x squared is equal to 5. x squared equals the constant 5. Now I apply the square root property. When I apply the square root property, this side simply becomes x. Okay. And on this side, you do two things. You take the square root of 5, because, of course, to undo squaring, you square root. And you also allow for the fact that there are two answers, both the positive and the negative. So basically, the way I taught this in class is, if blah blah squared equals a constant, then blah blah by itself is equal to plus or minus the square root of the constant. And... It's as simple as that. Now, this next equation, 4x squared plus 12 equals 0. We're also going to use the square root property here because we don't see any free-floating x term. We only see x squared. But we have to get this ready. And what I mean by getting it ready, to use the square root property, you have to have it in the form x squared equals a number. So my first step is going to be to subtract 12. So I have 4x squared equals negative 12. My next step will be to divide both sides of the equation, of course, by 4. x squared is equal to negative 3. So my constant here is negative 3. Blah, blah squared equals a constant. So blah blah by itself, in other words, x by itself is equal to plus or minus the square root of the constant. X, so whenever you have x squared equals a constant, your next step after you apply the square root property is to write x equals plus or minus the square root of the constant. Now we have one thing to finish here the square root of negative 3. Okay? Anytime you have a negative under a square root is when you're going to get, when you realize the answers are going to contain i. So we have the i. And remember in this case that the 3 remains under the radical. There's nothing you can do to pull the 3 out from under the radical. But you did put an i in the problem because the square root of a negative is always going to generate the answer i. And this problem has no real solutions because its solutions are i root 3 and negative i root 3. And we're done.